A very good evening to everyone. Welcome to Global Online. And in this session, we are back with our UGC NTA net preparation for paper one for your June 2024 cycle. And as you all know that we have started with a lot of MCQ preparation parallelly with our theory lectures. So in this particular session also, we are going to talk about important practice questions on the unit people development and environment. Before we start with the session, a very important announcement from the next week, that is from 8th of April. So this is 8th of April 2024. We will be starting our new session series for uh, especially for YouTube classes also, wherein we'll be starting with the uh, the base of teaching aptitude. So all those students who are new to our channel, all those students who are very serious to prepare for your 2024 June cycle for UGC NTA net, make sure that you have not lost anything and everything will be taught to you from the scratch, from the topic one, that is unit one, teaching aptitude with important topics, important concepts. So stay tuned. From 8th of April, we'll be starting these sessions on YouTube and it will be absolutely free for all you people who are definitely, you know, the subscribers so make sure that you are uh, you are subscribing the channel so that you get a notification on time and you really start very well your preparation for your June 2024 cycle for UGC net paper one. So yes, let's start the question now how to join uh, the sessions on the app also if you really want to you know add an advantage apart from YouTube if you want an add an advantage on the app how to join the app so all these I'll be telling you at the end of the video. So let's start with our first question for the day. So here, uh, yes, before I, we start with the first question also, let me tell you one thing. Most of the people here, you know, uh, students, I mean to say, are a little bit afraid because this unit, they feel it's one of the toughest unit. But uh, believe me that this unit is basically very factual. You need to know the concept very clearly. You need to know the cons uh, the topics very clearly. You need to know their application very, very clearly and it will really will helpful now how those all things will happen so that also i'll keep on teaching you with the coming you know time and days so don't, don't worry the only thing is that you have to make a consistent efforts to see the uh, lectures to follow the channel and the things will be you know will be taught in a very detailed manner uh, yes now coming to the first questions plants suitable for biomonitoring of sulfur dioxide pollution let me let me tell you plants which are suitable for biomonitoring of sulfur dye pollution which are there apricot peas gladius uh, tobacco grapes garden bean white pine moss lichens tomato and lettuce now see these are all the plants so i mean to say there is nothing which is odd man out okay plants and you know they have given some fruits also and certain products also but they i mean to say here the the question is basically on plants so you have to highlight those plants which are suitable for monitoring of bio sorry for bio monitoring of sulfur dioxide pollution so basically before understanding this question let's understand the topic of bio monitoring so it is nothing but the measurement of chemicals okay with reference to what with reference to uh, your you know uh, with the reference to fluid in the body so here we are talking about the plants. So measurements of, you know, the level of pollutants uh, can also be a concept of what? It is a concept of your, uh, concept of uh, measuring the sulfur dioxide pollution. So which of these plants, uh, where they have given you the list of the plants, so which of these plants will help, you know, for or for biomonitoring bio of sulfur dioxide pollutions are meant. So if you see the list, the plants which we talk about, okay, the list which is given below uh, and the plants which we talk about will be definitely what? <clears throat> so let's understand that plant in detail. I've given time. So in case if some students have read this, you know, and can know it well in advance, can tell. Otherwise, we will be doing this, you know, uh, very well. So here we are talking about those plants which are suitable for biomonitoring. It means measuring the pollution, right? Measurement of pollution. And those plants are white pine, loss, moss and lichens. So lichens are very sensitive to sulfur dioxide uh, pollution in the air. Uh, so definitely since industri industrialization, 
many lichen species have become extinct in large areas. So this can this is one of the uh, most important point to be noted. You know that lichens are widely used as environmental indicators, or they are also called as what bio indicators, along with white pine and moss. So these are the one which will be uh, these are the suitable plants which are useful for bio monitoring. That is checking the measurement of sulfur dioxide pollution and uh, because they are very sensitive to the same to the sulfur dioxide and you can tell this very confidently because they have you know ex they have become extinct since in industrialization uh, in larger areas and that proves or justifies the statement coming right okay coming to the next question as i said i have taken this questions today a little bit you know not on a heavier side just to make sure that you do not uh, uh, get tensed or you know uh, you are not uh, worried about this unit so let's do a little bit you know with slowly gradually has the questions increase i will make sure that till date whatever questions have been asked i'm completing that right an earthquake is related as major major of its magnitude in the richer scale in the range of what so you have this ranges they have given so here you're talking about the major magnitude so from the given scale okay 6.0 to 6.9 5.0 to 5.9 4.0 to 4.9 and 7.0 to 7.9 so from the options which are given below which are them are related to you know the major one so obviously a simple figure it is when we talk about major one it is 7.0 to 7.9 now see uh, with reference to earthquake measurement with reference to the sensitivity sensitivity of the earthquake the questions do come so you should be very you know uh, very clear with the concepts of uh, the skills so we i'll be providing you table also that will help you to understand you know any question which comes to an earthquake which is very factual in nature right now uh, assertion and reason questions yes these questions are again very uh, very uh, frequent or regular in your people development and environment so let's see they are not that tough you should just know the skill of reading the questions and this i have told you in so many units starting with the phase one of our uh, teaching aptitude till date whatever units i have taken almost seven units i have taken in all the units i have told you while doing mcq you should know the skills of reading the question understanding the question and coming to the right answer so the assertion and reason so assertion, assertion is a statement you have to look this statement from the reason point of view and come to the answer so climate change is going to increase social tension in india so we are talking about what you are talking about the climate change which is happening it's going to result no it is going to increase the social pressure in india the reason is the frequency and intensity of extreme weather events have or the serious consequences so uh, we are seeing you know the sensitivity of our weather also like for example the extreme amount of heat global warming we are talking about where you know uh, many a times we are seeing there is no schedule for uh, the seasons okay in monsoon you have rainy and rainy seasons you have you know severe monsoon so this 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 ups and downs and this fluctuations can have consequences so is it is this is this true that social tension uh is because of this frequency and intensity of the weather uh, events so whether the statement is sorry whether the assertion and the reason is true with the correct explanation or vice versa whether it is true and the one is false so looking at all the options yes statement that is assertion and the reason both are true and uh, the reason is the correct explanation for the assertion right and this is very common social tension will mount and that is the reason is because of this extreme weather climate you know sensitivity of the weather then question number 4 everyone the biggest hindrance in using biomass as a major energy source now please try to understand the biggest obstacle they are talking about what the biggest obstacle in using biomass okay as a major energy source is what so basically when we talk about biomass energy uh, what does it indicates it's a is the con in the context of energy biomass uh, you know it is a mat uh, it sorry it is basically talking about what it is talking about renewable energy which you know from plants and animals so it is a renewable uh, you can say energy that comes from plants and animals which can uh, which stores you know chemical energy from the sun that is in used to produce the plants through the process of photosynthesis which we have all learned in our schools right so what is the biggest hindrance what is the biggest obstacle is it air pollution 
is it low energy level is it technology not developed or is it large amount of land which is required to grow the crops so what it what can be the following from the following list what can be the hindrance for uh, you know uh, using biomass as a major source of energy so when you look at the given options okay as we said that it is nothing but a renewable source of energy from plants and animals but it means that we need to have lots of you know plants and animals in place but if you see the biggest hindrance itself is the large amount of land which is required to grow energy crops now we are going ahead with you know the concept of commercialization where we see all the aspects of you know uh, real estate booming up things are really out of the control and uh, oh, every every small place has a commercial aspect to come about right so this is basically that we do not have you know that amount of large requirement of land which is you which is one of the major hindrance and obstacle right then irritation in eyes is caused by pollutant of what so now see even this particular topic irritation of eyes you can say throat you can say skin rashes you can say there is a table which has been prepared okay you have to just make sure that you regularly you know uh, do this table so it becomes really easier for you so irritation of eyes is because of sulfur ozone nitrous oxide or none so it's very a straight factual question so irritation of eyes is because just costly sorry is caused because of sulfur so they may give you about scale energies they may give you about you know any any uh, uh, blue uh, syndromes or they may talk about a certain you know a specific condition so all this is because of what a uh, specific reason you know so that they will be giving you which pollutant is responsible you have to highlight the pollutant right now which of the, which is the source of chlorofluorocarbons now again this topic of chlorofluorocarbon is very common in uh, ugc net examination with, when it comes to people development and environment so here also you should be very clear when you are talking about these chlorofluorocarbons various types of questions can be expected so you have to ensure that you make you make sure that these questions you know are uh, very well attempted and uh, you know very little bit about them because this topic is one of the important topic so the source of uh, chlorofluorocarbons i think you should not take much time for this this is a very repetitive question now whether it is thermal power automobiles refrigerator or fertilizers so looking at all the options yes the source of chlorofluorocarbon starts uh, it is all about refrigeration and uh, refrigeration and air conditioning right okay coming to the list given below we have mass the following which talks about list 1 and list 2 and the codes are given with respect to ozone hole with respect to greenhouse effect natural hazard sustainable development so you have tsunami uv radiations methane ecocentrism now here also as i told you in any unit if you get match the following questions so you should look at the option which you know it's 100% correct many times it is you know rest of the answers can be wrong but sometimes it can be a 50 50 so you have to be sure with one more topic so looking at the concept of you know uh, ozone hole a greenhouse effect these are very common again topics in people development and environment uh, kitto protocol uh, montreal protocol ozone uh, chlorofluorocarbons climate kind uh, questions on climate these are very very you know very common questions sustainable development uh, sustainability development also is very common so you should know about them very well okay so looking at the options and giving you time and coming to the right option we have option number a as a right answer so if you see natural hazard okay if you see obviously it can be tsunami but three is a in at three places so you have to ensure that it is you know something else also you are aware about so okay coming to sustainable development ecocentrism coming to ozone hole it comes up you know, we talk about uv radiations coming with uh, greenhouse effect we talk about methane so option number a is the right answer so in such this case no you have to be careful with the other options also a is not uh, natch tsunami is common given in all so you should be ready with your next uh, option also right okay now next the smog in the cities in india mainly consist of what so again uh, the questions on smog so again this is one of the you know uh, very uh, frequent topic but it depends upon you know one cycle it may be there another cycle it is you know it's not there so smog is air pollution that reduces the visibility obviously 
which was first used in 1900 this term to describe the mixture of smoke and fog and it is usually you know it is coming out of burning coal in industrial areas you can find this which is similar you know which and the condition today we can say uh, most of the smog we see is photochemical smog okay so the smog is basically as i said heavier and darker with the help of smoke and you know the pollution that is chemical fumes so it consists of what in cities of india smog is oxides of sulfur nitrogen uh, you know monoxide carbon monoxide or sulfur and ozone so basically what it's or suspendable particles so what it talks about okay whether it is with whether it is with reference to your uh, sulfur nitrogen suspended particle matter that is spm which i'm talking about acronyms be careful ugc net has started using a lot of acronyms nowadays or oxides of sulfur so looking at all the options the smog in the cities in india is caused mainly because of nitrogen and unburned carbon hydrocarbon this is very dangerous okay so this is one of the major source you can say uh, in the cities of india with respect to smog then which of the following types of natural hazard has the have highest potential to cause the damage again this question the question is similar but always you know the texture of the question is completely different the question speak about one thing only but always it is given in you know in a various ways so earthquakes forest fires volcanic eruptions or droughts or floods so if you see the major type of damage is because of the droughts and floods right okay next is the percentage share of renewable sources in the power production in india now here see i purposely brought this questions when you are doing such questions okay see this is previous year questions right or practice questions maybe with respect to certain books or certain whenever you are doing such factual questions you know please remember you know that you have to do always do this questions with reference to your latest data now let let us say that this this particular question must be uh, done you know uh, like uh, let us take maybe a uh, two years back three years back okay so it it can affect your uh, answers also right so make sure that such type of question okay uh, you are doing trying to find out the latest data now here i'll show you i'll uh, purposely i did this question so when we talk about the percentage share of renewable sources in the power production in india it is 10 to 12 percent right okay but it can but when i take the concept of 2024 okay after certain time okay i'll just check the data it may be 12 to 14 so you have to you know now i've just given you an idea such questions you should not rely on the answers directly because that question may be 2 years back 3 years back always check the latest ratio and come and find this answer right okay yes that's all we have for the 10 uh, questions for the day as i said i have taken very light topics today because this is the first day we are starting with people development and environment in the coming days little bit heavier questions little bit heavy you know form of uh, solutions we are going to take so be re ready for that and at the same time if you want to join our app first download our app with the help of google play store register yourself with the registered mobile number make sure that you are you know uh, uh, registering with your number and going to the course where you have all the detail aspects of the course and it will be easier for you to ensure you know you are getting the things done and preparing yourself well for your june 2024 examination team contact details are given in any case any doubt just make sure that you are getting in touch with us right thank you everyone see you soon in the next class